What's up guys? I am super excited to show you guys the brand new fish I just got. I have never had a fish like this. I have a bunch of learning to do, a bunch of research to do, but you guys know I'm going to take you along that journey with me. So I want to show you guys what I got. Let's jump right in. frozen food that my man packed for me. We'll take a look at this later. Here we go, you guys ready? Okay, packed really, really well. Some good insulation here. Now, first thing I wanna show you guys, is when you get shipped fish to you, you should always get fish shipped to you with heat packs. And when your fish arrive, the heat packs should still be warm, very important. All right, here we go, guys. Are you guys ready? Here we go. I see him moving, so he made it. Check it out, check it out. Bam! Black Diamond Stingray. My first ever Black Diamond Stingray. Check him out. Brought to you by my man Way over at Super BD Stingrays. I'm gonna tell you more about Super BD Stingrays in a minute, but let's get this guy into quarantine and we'll talk some more. So I met my buddy Way over at the last Aquashella in Chicago and he has some amazing stingrays in there. It got me super interested in them. He taught me a little bit about them, but I know there's much, much to learn. I've been doing some research lately, but I promise that I'm gonna get you guys the good info as soon as I have it, you guys are gonna have it. For now in this video, I just wanted to share with you guys getting my brand new stingray and getting him into quarantine. And I'm also gonna take this opportunity to once again prove to you guys that you can start a brand new tank, even a quarantine tank, and add fish on it on day one. Even a fish like a stingray, which the one thing that I will tell you guys about stingray that I've picked up very, very quickly, is that stingrays are going to produce a much heavier bio load than your regular everyday fish. They're going to produce a lot more ammonia. So with that being said, when you add a stingray to your tank, you gotta be prepared for that increase in your bio load. Your beneficial bacteria that you currently have in your tank may not be enough. No, let me take that back. It will not be enough to handle the additional ammonia that your stingray is now producing in the tank. So I'm gonna add my new stingray to this 20 gallon quarantine tank right here in the floor. I'm gonna put him right in there with the water that he came in in the bag. And then I'm gonna drip acclimate that tank with the tank water that he's going in and we're gonna take our time. We're gonna do it right. This may be overkill, it may be unnecessary, but because I'm really brand new to stingrays, I wanna make sure I take every precaution I can think of just to make sure that his transition from this bag in a box, shipping to me overnight into a new tank is as stress-free as possible. It's never gonna be stress-free, but as little stress as possible because I don't wanna lose my very first brand new stingray. By the way, guys, I didn't even tell you my guy's brand new name. This Black Diamond Stingray, his name is Scuba. Named after my guy, Scuba Steve. You know who you are, Scuba Steve. I told you I was gonna get him. All right, guys, let's get Scuba into the quarantine tank. Let's go. So as you guys can see, this 20 gallon tank is completely brand new. Well, it's not brand new. I took it out of storage, but it has nothing in it. It's dry, no water. The sponge filter is completely dry, as you guys can see. This is a brand new sponge filter, does not have any bacteria on it. And the reason why I'm doing this specifically, guys, is just to show you, to prove to you that with prime and stability, you can add a brand new fish, even a fish that produces a lot of ammonia, into your tank on day one. The prime is gonna keep the water safe for the fish, and the stability is going to help produce the bacteria that you need to get the tank cycle. Here we go. Again, the reason why I'm adding him right with his bag water is that I don't want him to have to acclimate to any different kind of parameters than he's already in. I'm going to drip acclimate the tank water from the 150 
into this tank so he can get used to the parameters of the 150. But I am going to add some prime immediately right now to detoxify any of the ammonia that was already in his bag water. So five milliliters of prime is good for up to 50 gallons. So I'm gonna give five milliliters, a little bit more, into this 20 gallon, which is essentially a little over double dosing, which is fine because it is gonna produce a lot of ammonia. And I'm gonna continue this prime daily along with stability to begin to grow bacteria on that sponge filter. Now I'm gonna start filling this up. The sponge filter already is attached to air. So we're gonna oxygenate this water super quickly. And I'm gonna plug my heater in so it can start warming this water up. Setting up a drip system is pretty simple and easy. I'm using a good old fashioned airline hose. One end goes into the tank. I secure it with my handy dandy clamp. The other end has this valve connector that allows you to control how much air goes through the line, but it also allows you to control how much water goes through the line. Then with a good old fashioned suck and pull technique, you start the siphon, you adjust your valve and it controls how much flow you allow into the tank. So like I said, the reason why I'm drip acclimating is just to take every precaution possible because I'm still unsure of how fragile these fish are and I don't want to shock him with any crazy water parameters. Uh, I'm going to let this tank fill up completely off this drip right here. Not necessarily uh, any difference in pH or anything like that because he's going to stay in the same pH as my source water, which is equivalent to what these discus are in. But just so that he can get used to more of the nitrate levels that are already in this 150, he's gonna get acclimated to those nitrate levels that he may not be in before. And I'm gonna continue dosing the prime and stability daily to make sure that this tank stays safe and starts to cycle while he's in there. He's gonna be in quarantine for at least two weeks, guys, if not more. But I just wanna make sure that he's number one, eating properly um, and doesn't look stressed out before I put him into his new tank. So I added an air stone, I turned on the heater, and I covered the tank just to reduce the light to minimize the amount of stress that he may be feeling. I'm going to get back to the tank once it's filled, and I'll show you guys that in a minute. But before I do, I wanted to tell you a couple of the tips that I got from my buddy Way over at Super BD Stingrays. He was very helpful and gave me some really quick pointers that I want to tell to you guys right now before you go out and start looking for some stingrays to buy because i know how it is when you see some brand new fish you're like "Ooh, that looks nice let me go get some of my own so before you do that guys i have to mention right off the bat this opportunity to own a stingray presented itself to me and i just had to jump on it but i'm honestly not prepared for a stingray stingrays can get very very big i'm talking about two feet across, three feet across, even more. And my 150 gallon tank right here that he's gonna go into is only 18 inches deep. Plus, add in how much space my 3D background takes up, I lose a couple of inches on that as well. I can tell you right now that an 18 inch deep tank is not gonna be sufficient for a stingray, not even for one stingray. They're gonna outgrow that, they're not gonna have enough space. From the research that I've done so far, you do wanna have, I would say, a minimum, bare minimum of at least 24 inches wide, but you really wanna have more than that. You wanna mm -hmm. have at least like a three foot wide tank because these fish do not swim around in the water column. They, mo they spend most of their time on the bottom of the tank. So they need that surface area on the bottom of the tank to be able to live well and thrive. Now, I have plans in the very near future, I'll say, to upgrade this tank. I absolutely am going to upgrade the 150, mainly because of Flaco Dose, my arowana, is gonna outgrow this tank anytime now. So the plan was always to upgrade this tank anyway for him. So now that I have a Stingray, I'm not only gonna have to upgrade the length of the tank for the arowana, which was, I was gonna get an eight foot tank for the arowana, but now I also need to get a deep tank for the Stingray. So that's gonna be a pretty, pretty big tank. Um, I can't wait, I'm looking forward to it. But the reason why I'm telling you guys about this upgrade now is so that you don't think that it's okay to keep a Stingray in a tank that's only 18 inches wide. It's absolutely not. Um, they're gonna outgrow that faster than you think. So now, since I have to not only go longer, I also have to go wider, this is still gonna be primarily a discus tank, which means that I'm gonna get a whole bunch more discus in that bigger tank, whatever, however many gallons it may be, uh, a bunch more discus, I may even add a few more arowana since I have the space and who knows I might even double up and get a female stingray just in case they might want to have some babies and stuff that would be pretty cool to to watch and in case you guys didn't know stingrays um, birth live babies they birth actual pups they call them stingray pups which I think would be super cool to actually see uh, happening in my own 
my own living room, my own hobby. You know, that would be super cool. I also wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about quarantining new fish, the reason why I'm quarantining my new Stingray. Most people in the hobby, when they hear about quarantine, they think that it's only about disease prevention, which primarily it pretty much is, um, but that's not always the only case, right? My buddy Wei has told me that these guys are doing very well where he's from in their home tank, where they were bred, where they were kept, and they didn't have any signs of disease. But I'm still quarantining anyway, not only for the fact of trying to prevent disease spreading in my tank, but also because these fish are stressed. They're stressed from the commute, from wherever they came from, I think my guy's in Missouri if I'm not mistaken, all the way to New York, overnight in a box, uh, living in the same bag water for more than 24 hours, these guys are stressed. And if you put stressed fish in a tank with other fish, that can stress them out even more. So it's not just for making sure that they don't have disease and that they don't spread disease. It's also to make sure that they're eating well, because if they're not eating well um, and you put them into a tank when they're already stressed and then the other fish make them more stressed, that's not gonna help them to eat. That's gonna make it harder for them to eat. So quarantining is always a good idea to help them to de-stress, make sure they are eating well and swimming around freely, and then it's a good sign for you to add them into your tank if you don't see any signs of disease, which I don't, but I'm gonna quarantine anyway. As much as I want this guy in my main tank right now, gotta quarantine him. And like I mentioned in the previous video, not too long ago about quarantining your fish, I'm gonna auto-medicate with the quarantine couple, or I like to call it the QC, Seachem Paragard and Seachem Metroplex. These are gonna take care of your internal issues and your external issues Two very mild medications that's gonna get the job done and make sure your fish doesn't have any kind of disease. But I'm not gonna add these in right now while the tank is filling up because I have a chance of over medicating. I'm gonna wait till it fills up and I'll go ahead and add them in. My buddy Way from Super BD Stingray also hooked me up with some prime meat. He got me some frozen bloodworms and some frozen pond loaches. Food that these stingrays absolutely love, especially if your new guys aren't eating right off the bat. These types of foods are gonna kickstart their appetite and get them to start eating. And then you could kind of put them towards pellets and other types of food. Okay guys, the tank is full. He's hanging out in that corner over there looking well. Before I add in the medications, I do wanna attempt to try to feed him some of these blood worms. So I'm gonna drop it in the tank. I don't know if he's gonna eat it, but it'll be a really good sign if he does. Let's see what happens. Of course, if he doesn't eat it, I'm gonna have to take it out of the tank as to not add more ammonia. But let's give him a little bit of time, see if he's interested at all. Let me back up a little. All right, he's spinning, he's spinning. Maybe he's just smelt it. See if he spins the other way and tries to go over it. He's staring at me like, who is this guy? Oh, 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 I think he just got some. I think he's munching on some of it. I don't know how a stingray looks when they're eating, but to me, that looks like he's munching on some blood worms. What do you guys think? And there he goes for some more. All right. That tells me my man is doing pretty well. If he went after some food and started munching on it. Guess he's gonna take a break for now. I'm gonna leave the rest of it in there and see if he goes after it later when I'm not in his face with a camera. I'm about 10 feet away from the tank, guys, zoomed in, and he's going after more blood worms. So, good, good sign. So, Scuba just ate all of the blood worms I just put in the tank. That's a very good sign. Check them out. All gone, completely gone. That tells me he's healthy, he's doing well, he's not stressed out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add my quarantine tank medications. Paragard. Metroplex. One of these tiny spoons is good for 10 gallons. I usually add both of these daily for like the first week of quarantine. If I don't see any other signs of disease, 
then I'll discontinue the medications and just continue the quarantine without them. Tank is full, he's completely acclimated to the water of the 150. Uh, meds are in the tank, he ate some food already on day one, so very good sign. And now I'm gonna just hang out with him until quarantine time is over. If you wanna see him get into the 150, and I plan to give you a lot more detailed information on how to keep Stingray successfully, then make sure you watch that video right there. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you on the other side. Quick sneak peek at day two, Scuba already had his breakfast, a little bit more bloodworms, and he's super duper active, very playful, having a good time in his new tank. Welcome home, Scuba.